Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So this is going to be a little bit of a different video than I usually make. Uh, Sub asked me to make a video on my tier lists. There are a lot of tier lists going around, and don't worry if you don't know what that is, I'm going to get into that. But I told them, as I tell anyone who asked me this, that I don't do tier lists. I don't think of champions in that way. So we're going to talk first about tier lists. I'm going to give you a definition, their purpose, and how I think champions should be viewed. And then I'm going to talk about my top champs in terms of usefulness. All right. So first of all, what is a tier list? A tier list is simply a way to rank and categorize champions. So anyone that is making a tier list, they have a certain criteria in mind, and you need to know what that criteria is. Uh, otherwise, the tier list is not useful to you. So, for example, if they have a champion at their top tier, why is that champion there? Why did that champion get chosen over someone who is, you know, a tier lower? You just need to know what their criteria is, all right? And ranks can be named or numbered. I could say tier one, or I could say God tier, which is the popular uh, names for the ranks that we hear in this game. You'll hear God tier, demigod tier, uh, and that sort of thing. And the person who really popularized it is Seton. At least that's the one that I know of. All right. Now, what is the purpose of tier lists? So I mentioned Seton because a lot of people will come down on him for his tier lists and they'll say tier lists are ruining this game. No, tier lists are not ruining this game. How people are using tier lists might be ruining the game. But honestly, I just think it's hurting uh, the person who is viewing champions in this way. So the purpose of a tier list, and Seton says this during his videos when he makes the tier list, it's for beginners so that they can have some idea where to spend their resources. You know, there's not a, a how-to guide or anything like that. So when you're new to this game, you have no idea the relative worth of any champion. You don't have the experience. So... Your resources are going to be scarce, and you might want to know who you should invest these resources into. That is the purpose of the tier list, and it fills that purpose beautifully. Now, if you're a veteran of the game, you should no longer need to use those tier lists. Think of tier lists like training wheels. Once you've learned to ride, you could continue using training wheels, but it will kind of hold you back, right? So how should champions be viewed by veterans? Because again, when you are a beginner, it's understood you don't have any experience. But once you're a veteran, your mindset should change. You've encountered many different situations. And so champions are tools. They are problem solving tools. That is how I view champions. And that is how I believe veterans should view champions as well. Okay, so you have various problems in the game, you know, some node, some defender, something, and you need a solution. Champions are potential solutions to that problem. All right. Uh, someone would tell me, well, do you think this champion is better than this other champion? That's not the question you need to be asking. They're not just better than the other one. They are better at solving a particular problem. They're a better solution to a particular fight node situation. Now, you may have multiple tools that can solve the same problem. All right. Now, 
the best tool to use in a given situation depends on several factors. Availability, doesn't matter how well they are if you don't have them. Proficiency, how well are you at playing that particular champion? Preference, you may just like one champion over the other. You might like their play style. Um, it's nice and smooth, you know, the animations or what have you. And finally, their effectiveness. So even if you have many champions that can solve a problem, some of the champions are going to solve it better than the other ones. So these are all the factors that you need to consider before you decide what champion is the best to use for a particular situation. Uh, I remember a discussion that I had a while back on my stream about Omega Red and Havoc being a counter for Korg. So I wasn't saying that Omega Red or Havoc was better than one or the other, but I felt and still do that Havoc was a better counter for Korg. That doesn't mean that Omega Red is not a good counter as well, and it may just boil down to preference because they both can solve the Korg problem. Now, a node might make it so that one of them is actually a better choice, but that's the kind of way you need to be thinking, and veterans should already be very well practiced at thinking in this way. All right, so that is my take on tier lists. They're not ruining the game, but you have people who are stuck in that mindset. So if they don't get the top tier champion, then they feel like they are not doing well in the game. All right. Some champions can solve it better than others, as I've said, but you have champions that can solve it that you may not think of if you are stuck in that mindset, because if they don't make the top tier of someone's list, then you may not even consider them as a possible solution. So in that way, that sort of thinking will limit you. It's not going to ruin the game, but it will limit you and your effectiveness. Okay. Now, now that we've gotten that out of the way, here are my top most useful champs. Keep in mind, this is not a tier list. And I mentioned that you need to understand the criteria. Well, you can tell the criteria in the way that I listed that or titled it most useful. Okay. And I'll explain uh, my criteria is which champions I find myself using the most that solve the most problems. Not that they are necessarily the best at solving every problem, but they're the most versatile. All right. And in no particular order, these are the champions that I find myself using the most. Corvus, Ghost, Spider-Man Stark Enhanced, Quake, Heimdall. Now, let me explain a little bit on the last two. Quake is extremely useful. But remember I mentioned preference. I don't personally enjoy the style that you need to employ when using Quake if you want to be the most effective with her. That's just a preference. But she's on this list because I consider her one of the most useful champions. Heimdall, he is the most useful because of his synergy, and it's pretty unique, okay? Heimdall can give everyone a cheat death. That has saved resources so many times, all right? Now, those two, I don't find myself using as much. I will use Quake when needed, and I will include Heimdall when I'm doing content that uh, I feel would benefit from that uh, synergy. But the champions that I tend to use myself personally the most, Corvus, Ghost, and Starkey. 
my Corvus is awakened. So when Corvus is awakened, he has somewhat of a cheat death mechanic. He won't die while he has his glaive charges. That allows you to do some things that will save you resources. I can revive him and he can be at 1% health, but he's not going to die. Even if it's a poison node, he's not going to die until those charges run out. So you can do some things with him when he is awakened that you can't when he's not. But that damage that he does, that he doesn't need to be awakened for. He can solve quite a few problems just because of those two things. Ghost. Ghost is probably the most versatile champion in the game. Okay, if I had to rank who was the most useful, I would probably say Ghost. Because she can solve bleed nodes, poison nodes, incinerate nodes, I mean shock nodes. She just has such usefulness and she is so versatile. So I would consider her the most useful champion. And I'm very fortunate to have her. I use her as often as I can. Uh, then we have Starkey. Now, a lot of people don't like Starkey because he's a glass cannon. And you do have to get used to his uh, fighting style. But he is definitely one of my favorite champions. He hits very hard. That auto evade is extremely useful in so many different situations. So he almost stays permanently on my Alliance War team for just that reason. Okay. Now, you may wonder why this list is so short. There are many champions that are useful in many different situations. But these are the ones that I personally find myself using the most. It doesn't mean that others aren't useful. This is not a tier list. If I were to create a list of my top picks, champions, that sort of thing, it would take me so long because it would be so many different combinations. You know, it wouldn't just be this champion is rank one. No, I would have to break out every single situation and then list all the champions in terms of their effectiveness for that situation. Just to give you an example, say you are dealing with a bleed node. Okay, so for a bleed node, I would then rank champions, Ghost, Corvus, you know, uh, bleed immune champions would be ranked higher than the non-bleed immune or champions that take damage from the bleed. All right, so that's how I would have to make those lists. So I would have to go through every node, every combination, different defenders, and then make a list for each one of those not feasible. Okay. So that's going to do it. Uh, hopefully this will help you out. Hopefully this will answer the question why I don't make tier lists. And you do have my list of the most useful champions. Uh, but I think the most useful thing in this video would be getting you to think of champions as tools. Not that I just list out some champions and say these are useful. It won't help you if you don't have any of these champions. But if you can change your mindset and think of champions as tools, you may go through your roster and evaluate what you have and see if you have anyone that is good for the problem you're trying to solve. And that requires you to get to know each of the champions. One of the reasons that I try to make those closer look videos is so that you can learn these champions and perhaps see a use for them that you may not have thought of before. Okay, so that's going to do it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found this informative. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree? Uh, do you have champions that you feel uh, are more useful, 
feel free to leave those in the comments below. And you all have a blessed day.